thank you very much again for coming. It's an incredibly great pleasure for me to welcome Hajun Chang here. Uh, Hajun is one of my favorite authors. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, he's written several books which, re which are, apart from anything else, brilliant read and great fun. Uh, the particularly best known amongst it in terms of popular is his books on uh, you know, uh, Kicking Away the Ladder and Bad Samaritans and 23 Things to Don't Tell You About Capitalism. Amongst other things, one of the, 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 the achievements of these works and other work of Arjun is that he does a, a, a brilliant job of, of the history of development of now rich countries and how and destroys many of the myths about the relative roles of the markets and the government in the process and makes it highly relevant to today's debates on development policies and what developing countries should or should not do and what are the historical lessons of development. So it's also highly relevant for today and it's a great way of bringing together both history as well as its relevance to policy options today, uh, and along the lines that, along with Alexander Gershon Tron's famous work, are two of my favorite uh, pieces of, 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 of research. Uh, Hajun teaches at Cambridge University. He is kindly giving us a book talk, as you know. And then afterwards, we have the pleasure of Professor Sanjay Reddy who is best known for, probably, probably best known for his work on poverty and measurement, but like Hajud, has very eclectic and wide-ranging interests and, uh, and, 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 and also shares profundity in the same way that uh, they share other things in common. So thank you very much, Hajun. without any further ado. As I said, after the, for the questions, please raise your hand, and there are two mics. Uh, this and another one. I also like to welcome Professor Jose uh, Anton uh, Campo, who many of you know is co-president of the Initiative for Policy Dialogue, IPD. Uh, Sanjay Reddy is also associated with IPD in various capacities, and, and, and also Jiaming, who did the organizing of this event. Without further ado, thank you so much, Arjun, for coming here and giving us this talk. Thank you. Thank you, Akbar, for that very generous uh, introduction and thank you everyone for coming on a very nice evening I mean that looks like a perfect weather for a stroll uh, but uh, you chose to come and listen to me so I'll uh, try to make it worth your while <coughs> well most people agree that economics is very important you know after all many things that happen in the economy are really important bearings on our lives that uh, wherever we are, whatever we do, I mean, it, it, these things affect our wages, uh, working conditions, pensions, healthcare bills, and what have you. But despite this, uh, there's widespread perception among non-economists that economics is too complicated and therefore better left uh, to the experts. This is uh, quite widely accepted, you know, when economists like Greece and Italy got into trouble, these economists were told to appoint some economists as the prime minister because they really need to sort this pro uh, problem out, despite the fact that these were people who are not elected uh, representatives of the people. Eh? But why is it like that? You know, when you think about it, it's uh, very interesting, because people have very strong opinions about all sorts of things. You know, gay marriage, Iraq, climate change, nuclear power stations, without having any technical expertise in these areas. You know, I have uh, my strong view on American foreign policy, but what do I know about it? You know, I took one course in international relations back in 1983 when I was an undergraduate student in South Korea, <laughs> and the crusty old professor who taught us used a textbook from the 1960s, yeah? 
So what little I know about the international relations is uh, from half a century ago. But then whenever these topics come up, I spout my opinions. I'm sure you're all the same, yeah? whatever the topic is. So why is uh, e economics different? Well, it's actually a very complicated thing, but the, sh the short answer is that my professional colleagues have been fantastically successful in persuading the rest of the world that the stuff is so difficult that you wouldn't understand it even if we bothered to explain it to you. <laughs> I happen to very strongly disagree with this view in my previous book that Akpa mentioned, the 23 things that they don't tell you about capitalism. I actually wrote a short professional suicide note <laughs> by saying that 95% of economics is common sense. Of course, made to look difficult, you know, with the use of jargons, mathematics, graphs, statistics. Mm? And even the remaining 5% can be understood in its essence, if not in all technical details, if somebody bothers to explain it in an accessible way, which is what I try to do in this book. So this is uh, the cover of the book. Actually, it, uh, it came out earlier in the UK uh, on the, a different format. This is a pocket size paperback edition, exact same content, just a different publisher, different uh, typeset, and so on. And indeed, in order to make this uh, book accessible, in order to make uh, economics accessible to non-economists, I really pull all the stops I can. So there's Mary Poppins, which uh, starts off the chapter on the, the finance. There's uh, The Matrix, My Fair Lady, Gone with the Wind, The Simpsons. <laughs> well, at least uh, Ned Flanders, my favorite uh, Simpsons character. So I really try. I don't know how much I succeed, but I really try. But don't get me wrong, being accessible doesn't mean that I'm trying to give you some baby version, the dumbest guide, you know. So seven things that you need to know about inflation, you know, three things that you didn't know about this and that. I do not do that because I take my readers very seriously. And I really do talk about, I mean, in accessible language, I really do talk about all kinds of fundamental issues. What is economics? Can it be science? Can we get rid of politics from economics? What are the ethical uh, foundations of economics? Hmm? And many things. So in doing so, the book tries to attempt sorry, attempts to offer something completely different, as the British uh, comedy group Monty Python used to say. So let's see how different this is. Well, this is the table of contents, and if you read through them, apart from some kind of fancy titles uh, that I used uh, to draw your attention, you will notice that there are actually quite a lot of things that you don't normally see in an economics book uh, these days. So the, as I mentioned earlier, in chapter one, I di discussed the definition of economics. Uh, in chapters two and three, history of uh, capitalism. Two is a short snapshot version. Three is a long narrative. Four, I discussed uh, different ways of doing economics, if you like. And then in terms of uh, individual topics, I also touch upon topics that are largely, if not completely, neglected in economics uh, discussion these days, like production in chapter 7 and work in chapter 10. I'm, I'm going to talk about these issues in some more detail later, so let's uh, that, uh, leave it at that. Another thing that makes this book different is that I give my readers a lot of what I call real-life numbers. You know, economics is supposed to be a number subject, and indeed, if you read you know, an article about uh, the economy or academic articles about 